Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. John O'Doherty, a professor of monogastric nutrition at the University College of Dublin. So John, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Thanks, Clayton. Um, I was brought up in a dairy farm in the west of Ireland, in County Clare, and in 1987, I completed a bachelor's degree in agriculture, and in um, 1999, I completed a master's degree in animal science. Um, following those degrees, I gained a PhD in animal nutrition from University College Dublin in 1994, and in 2014, I gained a DSC degree from the National University of Ireland. Um, so, having completed my PhD studies in '94, I took up a post as college lecturer within the Department of Animal Science and Production in University College Dublin. And in 2014, I was made Professor of Monogastric Nutrition. And then in 2017, I was made full Professor of Animal Nutrition. Animan International Supplier of Precision Minerals. When most trace minerals are only bioavailable, Animan trace elements are also active in the digestive tract and permit secure piglet's gut health. Awesome. So I understand from all that time uh, working at the College of Dublin, um, you did a lot of work in terms of sustainable swine production and alternatives to antibiotics and zinc oxide and other things in that field. So would you mind just kind of diving into what you've uh, studied over the last couple of years and some of the things that you've learned? Yeah. Okay. Um, it, my, my main area of research over the last 20 years or so has been sustainable pig meat production and food security. And I think it's one of the greatest challenges we face in the 21st century um, is to su sustainably feed 9 to 10 billion people by 2050, while at the same time reduce environmental impact. Um, the current issues associated with pork sustainability are around ethylene management, carbon mitigation, um, animal welfare, and alternative animal health strategies to reduce antimicrobial use. And, you know, and all are impacting the pork industry. And as a result, it's undergoing considerable changes in response to what the community wants and what the government wants and what re re retail demands. Um, the challenges tend to be common across basically all pork producing countries. And in order to um, survive, I think we have to uh, remain innovative. Uh, so as a result of that, my research has examined how nutrition strategies improve the efficiency of pig production in the face of challenges associated with animal, with the environment and, an, and animal health regulations. My main focus has been around uh, ways of improving digestive health in pigs, um, maternal nutrition, and also around environmental research and how they lead and how they help sustainable food production. And the first one I want to talk about is ways to, of improving animal health uh, without medication, particularly uh, around weaning time. And traditional measures to reduce weaning associated intestinal dysfunction have centered on dietary inclusion of antibiotic growth promoters um, in weaning pig diets or high concentrations of zinc oxide at doses well above nutrition requirements. And, you know, and the direct purpose of these additives is to suppress the growth of pathogenic bacteria such as E. coli and salmonella. However, owing to the possible contribution of these um, in-feed antibiotics and the development of, anti and the development of antibiotic, antibiotic strains of bacteria, the European Union imp uh, implemented a full ban on AGP usage in, li in livestock diets around in January 2006. And after that, zinc oxide was a successful alternative to deal with the negative impact of weaning on growth and gastrointestinal dysfunction. Um, but, in the, um, but in 2022, zinc oxide was banned in the EU, EU due to its association with environmental con contamination and antimicrobial resistance. So there is or there was a requirement for alternative dietary supplements that can support growth, gastrointestinal health and functionality in the post wean pig. And my research has focused in this area really over the past 15 years. Um, a lot of my research has focused on identifying bioactives for the post-weaning diet. And we have used a diverse range of feed additives. And 
Also, a diverse range of feed additives had been researched in order to replace antimicrobials. And various natural materials have investigated have been investigated as efficient alternatives to um, in-feed medication and also to zinc oxide. And if we look at the human world, a lot of the modern medicine that we see um, comes from plants. So our research, um, marine macroalgae, uh, we have used marine macroalgae extracts or, for example, make it simpler, seaweed extracts. And these are showing very, very strong uh, antimicrobial, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and antimicrobial properties. Um, and if we look at our studies, um, our studies have shown that the supplementation of crude seaweed, seaweed extracts, containing two sugars, laminarin, which is a beta-glucan, and, fuc and fucidin, which is a fucus sugar, have shown to be effective in post-wean pig diets. However, we would have found that the supplementation of whole seaweeds has very, very, get very, very little response in the post wean pig diet. So, in summary, that you're getting very, very little response from whole seaweeds, but you've got to extract basically the beneficials, laminarins and fucidins, from those whole seaweeds. Uh, we go back to some of our earlier work. What we would have seen would have sh so shown no positive effects from the use of seaweeds. And in, in, in a lot of the cases, actually, we saw um, reductions in performance. But what we're seeing is that it's the use of the sugars, laminarin and fucidin that are got from seaweed, that these are what reduce basically intestinal pat pathogens, they modulate the immune system, and they enhance the performance and in intestinal health of the post wean pig in the absence of feed medication. So one of the problems with whole seaweed is that you see such variation in that seaweed. You know, it's influenced by the variety that you use. It's influenced by the season of harvest, it's influenced by the geographic location. It's influenced basically by the environmental condition. And all of this basically are, or sorry, environmental conditions. And all of these are going to influence the chemical composition of the seaweed, and that's going to have basically uh, effect, ne negative effects on performance. So in our work, we extract the goodness from the seaweed, and we're showing very, very positive responses um, to laminarins and fucidins in, in, in the absence of zinc oxide. And what we see is that laminarin and fucidin have very, very strong um, biological properties. Uh, for example, laminarin has very strong prebi pre prebiotic activity, and we have shown in our research that it increases the relative abundance of Prevotella, for example, in the large intestine of the wean pig. And we know for, from some published work that Prevotella is very much involved in improved performance, for example, in, in, in pigs. Um, and also we've shown that it's a very, very good source of butyrate in the wean pig and all the benefits that, that butyrate gives as well. I suppose one of the big problems in this type of research is that um, you've got to extract the laminarin, you've got to ex extract a few chitons from the seaweed. And that is the real, real challenge. And the real, real challenge is in that extraction process. And we would have shown in a lot of work, in a lot of our work, that the extraction methodologies that we use does influence the biological activities. So very clearly is the type of biological activity, sorry, the type of extraction process you use can have a major effect on the biological activity of, um, of, of that seaweed. So with the use of those um, the seaweed extracts, do you see then a, re a reduction in post-weaning diarrhea and scours and nursery piglets that's similar to the use of zinc oxide as well? Yes, uh, with the use of laminarin, and I'm talking about pure, pure laminarin, we get response very, very similar to what we get with zinc oxide in terms of average daily gain, in terms of food conversion, in terms of final weight. And we also see a, a major reduction in fecal scores of diarrhea. Maybe not as good as what you would see with zinc oxide, uh, but a major depression in comparison to the control. So then what do you think the next steps would be to... Um make this make the use of this more um available and maybe more 
uh, cost effective because I'm sure like the extraction process is not necessarily uh, cheap. And so there's going to be uh, several steps before this comes out on like, say, a commercial level. But um, before we get there, what would you say the next steps are for this line of research? Yeah, the, the next steps are really around large scaling producing um, laminar in, in particular. Um, and you know, a lot of the traditional methods that we have that, that are being used to extract laminar are very, very energy intensive. They're time consuming. They use, utilize a large volume of solvents and the results are quite poor. However, there is new, you know, there's new technologies coming available all the time, like hydrothermal assisted extraction. And that is low cost. It's easy to use and it's environmentally friendly. Um, and it's not that difficult to scale up. So I think there's where future research uh, will be in that extraction process in order basically to meet the biological activities of laminar. Securing the future of your valuable sow herd begins with your gilts. Gilt preparation is the foundation of the sow herd as well as its progeny, leading to more sustainable swine production. For nearly four decades, our tailored services and multifaceted solutions have ensured lifetime performance from the beginning. DSM offers gilt protection you can trust. Learn more at dsm.com forward slash sow longevity. Gotcha. Well, I'm sure there's plenty more that we could dig into, um, especially it's kind of hard to fit so much work into a, a short like 10 to 15 minute podcast. But I appreciate you coming on the show and uh, sharing all this line of work with us. Thank you, Jaden. Yep. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Oh.